So welcome. We're going to look at solutions how the ocean can contribute to the generation of renewable energy into the future. Today, the renewable energy share for electricity is about 22% and it's growing to 26% by 2020. However, if you look at new energy systems coming online, about half of that is already from renewables. And what I found the most interesting is it's actually China, who is the biggest force where 40% of the global renewable energy is produced today in China. The need for global electricity is in 2012 about 2.5 terawatts, and it could almost double to rise to four terawatts by 2040. Ocean energy, on the other hand, provides uh, at best about 0.4 terawatts, which could be one, about 10% of the global energy need into the future. So how then can ocean energy be produced, electricity from the ocean that is? So there's five different ways how we can do it. On the one hand, we can use the tidal elevation that we see in the oceans and to turn that into energy. We can use ocean currents, waves, and swell. But we can also use the difference between the warm and the cold temperature of the ocean and also the salinity gradients between freshwater on land and ocean water. So the energy in the ocean waves is a form of solar energy that is mediated through the wind system and the waves into the atmosphere. The energy of the ocean tides is provided by the gravitational acceleration and the difference between the sun and the moon and the planet as they have different constellations. And the energy from ocean currents obviously comes directly from the temperature difference and the winds. So all of them have their roots in the natural environmental system and are sustainable, free of CO2, and could run forever. So now let's look at some of the more specifics how energy can be produced. Let's start with the tides. We have tidal ranges that go up and down twice a day in many parts of the world. And in some regions, the tidal difference is very large. In some are low, for example, we find 10 meters or 30 feet of tidal difference between high and low water, and it's, and it's even more in the Bay of Fundy. Those places have understood how to use the power of alternating sea levels and use that difference of gravity to fuel turbines that can produce electric energy from the tidal difference. At the same time, you can also have tidal currents that go back and forth every six hours in a different direction and use tidal turbines to harness that energy. It is estimated that together, tidal currents and tidal turbines can produce as much as 0.9 terawatts, which would be quite a significant fraction of the global energy production. But these systems are not yet fully installed, but we see a lot of potential growth that comes our way into the future. Today, in the tidal turbine systems, we have twin systems, and this company called Seagen, they are producing these twin systems, they're lowered into the tidal streams, and then they slosh back and forth when the currents go back and forth. And this electricity is really useful for small communities near tidal outlets, but they've also already been installed in Pacific Islands and atoll systems where you have tidal currents sloshing back and forth. So I think it's a wonderful uh, distributed terms of new energy that we can see in the future. The other uh, methods that we can use to generate electricity from the ocean comes from a different system. And here we're harnessing the waves. So the ocean has a lot of surface waves that go up and down. And what we can devise is different systems that take advantage of being thrown up and down with the ocean currents and release that kinetic energy and turn it into electricity. Some use systems where the waves spill over an artificial reef and then slowly the water, as it sinks down, generates energy. Other systems use mechanical elements that they get pumped up and down to produce energy that way. Those stations are not very big right now. They have maybe 75 or 100 kilowatts, which is a kind of small uh, production. It's technically quite challenging because you're in the middle of the ocean where the waves are sloshing back and forth. Maintenance is not so easy, but it's, it's, it is estimated that this will become an increasing uh, possibility to generate energy in those places of the world where waves are abundant. The problem with waves also is they're not always there. In some seasons, the waves are abundant. In other seasons, the ocean is more calm. So they're not that stable of an energy source compared to the tides. The third way you can use energy from the ocean is you can harness the power of the great ocean currents. We know about the Gulf Stream and deep ocean circulations. We know about coastal currents. 
And all these provide energy that we could also harness. And there are different systems designed that look like giant kites with propellers underneath them that would then sail in the Gulf Stream and sail in the major ocean currents, have rotors that spin around and generate currents. These currents would then be transmitted to the kites. But you can also see you have the energy in the middle of the ocean. Transporting on land is a bit of a challenge because you need to have plugs where you plug these turbines in, and then you have to have the cables that bring the energy back to shore. Strong currents we find on the western side of ocean basins. So for example, in front of major cities like New York or Washington DC, this would be an option. But on eastern ocean basins, the currents are usually rather weak. So uh, cities like Kapstadt or Morocco couldn't quite benefit from that. But it's another area that people are looking into. Some more exotic areas uh, to produce energy come from ocean thermal energy. Here the idea is to use the difference between the warm surface and the cold deep waters. So you're basically setting up like a heating system where you pump up some of that cold water and bring it uh, together with the warmer water from the surface. And from that temperature gradient, you use special substances that evaporate at low temperatures that drive then generators and then they get uh, evaporated and cooled down with the ocean cold temperatures. But because the temperature difference between the warm and the cold is not very big, it's maybe 10, 15, maximum 20 degrees Celsius, uh, this, these systems are not very efficient, so you need a lot of water to pump that. On the other hand, not everywhere on the planet we have access to cold ocean waters. The country where I live in Germany, there is no deep ocean in front of our countries, while other islands like Hawaii, they are located in the warm tropics and have cold waters at deep places, so they are very well suited. You can calculate that this thermal energy can produce about two times or even three times the energy needed to provide the whole world with electricity. But then what you would have to do, you would have to harness all the warm and cold temperature different of the ocean. That is not desirable because you would change the ocean stratification, you would change the ocean circulation. So maybe 10% is maybe the maximum that you want to harness. And if you do that, it's going to be a contribution at maybe the 5 or 10% level to global energy production. Maybe the most exotic way to produce energy out of the ocean is from the difference between fresh water and salty water. Here, you, you are harnessing the osmosis, that is the permeability of a particular cloth or a particular substance that you bring between salty and fresh water, and then the fresh water by osmosis goes through that membrane and builds up a pressure. From that pressure difference between fresh and salty water, again, you can drive a turbine and you can generate energy with that. It'll take quite a bit of water to do it, but it has been tried and it's a, it's a possibility to use that technology not only to produce energy, but also to produce purified seawater, which then becomes fresh water to alleviate some of the challenge that we have around water security. Uh, the efficiency of these systems is probably not so high, and there's only a few places on the globe where this will be, could be done at a big scale. It requires a stable infrastructure. There's somewhat of a high maintenance needed. But I think we'll see it in many areas around big settlements uh, that these combined osmosis, energy production, and water purification will be part of the solution that we can use the energy for. So if you think of the ocean and its contribution to energy, there's a number of great potentials out there. I think it's the space where innovation is happening. We're seeing an enormous amount of projects being started, looked at around the world. And the prospect that we can generate about 10% of the electricity from ocean sustainable energy without producing CO2, without harming the environment is very exciting. And I encourage you all to engage in this thinking, in this technology, and develop new ways how we can harness the power of the ocean for sustainable ocean development.